once they get to me, and, and, and uh, it's literally within seconds, if I, if I press right in here, uh, and we, we actually designed this test uh, because it, it comes specifically onto that particular area, we call it a foveal sign, because this area is anatomically referred to as the foveal. Uh, and, and when we press on that area, if they have this split tear, um, it'll drop them in their tracks. It, it, is, it is not subtle. Uh, it, it is. It's the sort of thing that they will guard against. They'll pull their hand back. Um, they'll they'll really give me a bad look, like "Don't do that again, Doc." And it's distinctly different than their opposite side. Um, and and I know how that feels because I actually have a split tear in my left wrist. It's not a bad one, but I, I know how that feels. And sure enough, we started uh, applying this this sign because again, we didn't have any other way of confirming this diagnosis. The we, we, we didn't know what to look for on the MRI because the there, there's not a, a lot or there's not a, 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 a disruptive tear in the ligament. It's not like a, a sprained ankle where the ligament pops apart. There's continuity there. So what do we look for in an MRI? We had to we had to learn what to look for with this. But I started following the patients that had this positive foveal sign and correlating it with what we then found in the operating room because most of these patients ended up going to the operating room. They didn't get better with casts or, or splints or, or conservative management. They'd already tried that. That's the reason why they were coming to see me. They'd been down that road sometimes for years. And when we took them to the operating room, sure enough, all of them had this, this uh, area of, of irritation. And uh, so we started looking at the numbers then. And, and again, this, this started about eight years ago where I really seriously was, was looking at these patients. And I, I told them up front, I said, this is what I think is going on. It hasn't been published. Nobody else is doing it as far as I know of. It's not an experiment uh, because we've been doing wrist arthroscopy for, for years. It's just that I believe we're on to something that can help um, uh, with the pain. And so we started following the numbers, and sure enough, this, this simple little foveal sign uh, ends up to have a sensitivity of about 93%. Uh, so out of, a, out of 100 patients uh, with a, uh, a foveal sign, 93% of the time, it's going to mean that they have either this split tear, which is stable, it's just that longitudinal division in the ligament, or a massive disruption of the whole ligament complex, at which point the, 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 the forearm is dislocating. So that's not a hard thing to differentiate those two things. So I consider this to be about a 93% sensitivity for the split tear. And sure enough, in those patients that do have the positive foveal sign, that end up going to the operating room, uh, of those, 95% will be able to return essentially to normalcy. The remaining 5%, we find out, are those that probably have some element of instability, but it hasn't completely de declared itself yet. And so the, it, it will, down the road, they come back and they're, and they're unstable. So it's been one of the most gratifying things. Uh, it's, it's been hard to... I tried to talk myself out of this because it's been so successful. Um, I think that when we look at, um, when we look at outcomes of, of surgery and we say that certain things are, are effective 80% of the time. And we're actually in surgery, believe it or not, many things we're kind of happy to have that 80%, uh, which is, uh, to me, uh, evidence that we have a lot of work to do yet. But one of the things that kind of philosophically has struck me that the outcomes of a study are, they're sort of uh, based upon the assumption that you have the right diagnosis. You can have a perfectly good treatment but if you apply it to the wrong condition, it's probably not going to work. And this is a good example where we've got a hyper-accurate means of being able to make a diagnosis. And a very common problem that was previously either undiagnosed or misdiagnosed, and because of that mistreated. So I've got a really high percentage chance of being able to get to this diagnosis. And then we have an incredibly straightforward uh, uncomplicated means of being able to fix it. So that's why we end up with a 95% overall success rate in being able to get patients back to, to whatever they want to be doing. Uh, if anything, just enjoying life recreationally, but also with their, with their employment. It's not, not uh, only uh, baseball players uh, that, that have very high profile jobs uh, where, where there's a lot of pressure on them. There's no doubt about it. 
But I can tell you it's just as important for the, for the carpenter or the, uh, or the dairy farmer uh, uh, to, to have their landscapers, uh, to have their wrists where it's not hurting because it cuts into their, their productivity, their lifestyle, and their happiness as well. So it's been an incredibly successful uh, uh, outcome with this story.